So number one will be your identity. Now the identity that you hold is very, very crucial as a trader. Who are you as an individual, right? Because if you believe that trading as a whole is wake up, make loads of money, click loads of buttons, trade every day, and that being in the market deems you as a trader, you're setting yourself up for failure. I've done this myself. I used to sit in my chair from 7 a.m. till 5 p.m. trying to trade EU and every single move and every single pip. And to be honest with you, less trades, better quality trades with better risk rewards and better ideas and confluences behind them can serve you on a much greater level. And the more I speak to individuals that have been in this game for a lot longer period, many of them trade like two, three times a month for some only trade four or five times a year. But if your identity is someone that thinks trading is clicking loads of buttons, waking up without doing any work and just going on MT4 and hitting buy or sell and you're going to make money, you're deluded and you need to fix it and you need to work on your identity and it can take time. But the biggest thing I'd say, and I said it in previous videos, and this comes from Rewired, is get yourself a journal, start of December, write down, it doesn't have to be the start of December, it could be now, and write down my identity is someone who, and then write, who are you as a person? And you can change and mold your identity provided that you actually abide by the identity you're trying to create for yourself. Number two would be confidence. Now, it's a little bit of a weird one, I guess, and not one you would probably think of, but I feel like a lot of the time in trading, we're scared to be wrong and we have this fear of being wrong, not even in trading, but in life. We always want to be right and we always want to, you know, understand every nuance in the market and the reasons why price action went up and down. And the reality of it is, is you can go on that journey and it can absolutely mess with your head, can completely ruin you. And it can put you in a position where you almost have information overload and you don't really know what to do with it. And then you're asking yourself, should I do this? Should I do that? However, if you have the confidence, if you're someone that, you know, is confident in life, you'll, you'll, you'll be outspoken, you'll do your thing. It can really help you to ensure that when you're trading, you're not getting skewed by what other people are doing or saying you're not fearful of losing, you understand and accept that you can lose. And this kind of leads me into number three. And I think number three will be accepting that you're always going to lose and you have to just move on from it. No matter what you do, no matter what course you take, no matter who you learn from, I am yet to meet anybody with a 100% strike rate consistently. You may have months where you don't lose. You may have weeks. You may even have quarters but I guarantee you now, you will lose in trading. And until you can understand that, and until you can accept that, you are just gonna forever go round and round in circles because you're looking for something that doesn't exist. Every single person that's stuck, every single person that's trying to find that secret thing, you will forever be stuck. You're gonna have periods of consistency and then boom, you're gonna lose it. And it shouldn't be like that. Confident trades come from a confident mind. Having the confidence to say, look, this is me, I'm gonna get in this because I back myself and I'm not bothered if I lose and accepting that loss is, is crucial. It's just a quick one. Today's video is brought to you by DarwinX. If you're yet to check out DarwinX, I don't know where you've been, but clearly, you need to get involved. It's literally the price of a Nando's a month, which let's face it, all of you are smashing Nando's on the regs. So I don't know what you're waiting for. It's a great way to not only build a verified track record, but also you can attract investors, you can get investor capital, and you can get allocations from their Darwinia, which is also an incredible way to make extra money. You can simply link this to a trade copier. There's a link in the description. Let's get back to it. The market's inevitably gonna knock you down and without resilience and without the courage to get back up and go again, it's gonna be very tough. And I understand sometimes you can be going round and round, you can be doing your routines, you can be being in there, showing up every day, turning up to the market. And it almost feels like it doesn't care. It's almost just shafting you and you're like, when's it gonna give? When am I gonna get some kind of positive outcome that's gonna boost me to continue. It will come as long as you remain resilient and you stay on plan and you stay in focus and you stay disciplined and you just do the things that you need to do every day. We're very quick to judge those little things that we perhaps neglect and think, oh, that didn't mean anything, that didn't add up to my success. Only when you stop doing those little things, you very quickly fall off. And again, I've experienced this in my own life. It happens, but it's very important to understand that all those little things add up and they do become something much bigger and greater in life. The next one would be patience. I think patience is something that's so overlooked. And again, I know I've said this in so many videos, but I cannot stress enough how important patience is in the market. Everybody's so quick to want to be in the market and it goes back to the first point where I, our identity 
identity is probably molded in a way that we think being in the market equates to more money. However, often being in the market actually equates to losing more. Sometimes when you know months are dry and it's dry periods, the best thing you can do is do nothing. But I think a lot of us struggle to do that because we feel guilty that we haven't done anything and our identity as a trader says, but you need to be trading to be a trader, therefore you're not doing anything, therefore you're not a trader, therefore, oh my God, I'm guilty, let's just get in, smash 100 lot on EU. But the reality of that is, is if you just spoke to yourself in that moment and understood yourself on a greater level, you would never have dived into that trade and it's probably gonna be a loss. And the reality of it is, is once that's happened and that cloud of kind of like hijacking's gone and you're like, why did I do that? you're going to then feel even worse than if you just sat there and done nothing. And it's easy to say, I think this is going to go, oh my God, I need to get in. And you get this little rejection from the market and it's almost enticing you in and you dive in, but it didn't fit any of your plan or your system, but you did it anyway and the patience is gone. That can be the difference between having like a break even month when generally nothing's happening and having like a minus five. And it all comes down to just being patient, doing something else, fulfilling your time with other things. And this is something people don't speak about enough of. And I've said it so many times on the channel, anyone new here, you know, Trading's lonely, trading's tough. When you go all in on trading, you lose a hell of a lot of stuff that you've been used to having your entire life. And again, if you're not aware of that, then that's when the impatience comes in because you're bored. I think the next one would be mindfulness. Mindfulness, self-awareness. This is something that's been huge for me. And again, you know, a testimony to Rewired. Obviously, being able to be self-aware and understand when I'm feeling these moments of urgency to trade or, you know, I want to take a trade or I need to make R or I want to make money this month or I want to pass that challenge and, and being able to go actually no, you know, stop, think about it for a minute. Is it good? Because the reality of it is, and again, we've said this for years now, guys, if the market looks good and if the setup's there, it will jump out and hit you in the face. You know those setups that you're looking at and you're just like, oh, that's got everything. And you almost don't care what happens. You accept the risk because you're happy you've taken a trade that meets all the criteria, is the absolute juice of juice. And you're like, this slaps regardless of what happens. I don't care. You can't say that for every trade, right? Because there isn't that many trades that look like that. Now, yes, some, you know, average trades or higher risk trades and they might play out, but across a year, are they actually beneficial to take? But if you're self-aware enough to actually go, okay, well, I probably shouldn't take this trade. Again, they all tie into one another. They might sound similar, but they're all their own premise in different ways. And until you can be aware enough to kind of catch yourself in the moment, I've spoke about it before, and before you click the button, your hand's almost like no, and you go back no, and you're being aware, that thought process to almost just a couple of seconds to stop yourself can be the difference between having a really bad day and a good day. Practice like, you know, meditation, whatever it might be, just to get in tune with yourself more and to understand yourself on a greater level. Obviously, I advocate for Rewired because that was the thing that really elevated me. And it's not just in trading, right? I've had a bit of a hiccup in trading, as I shared a few weeks ago. That was more me just being stupid. Rewired's elevated me in so many areas of life, the way I handle myself, conduct myself, the way I feel, my mood, my just when people meet me, my confidence, my ability to think you know, from a different perspective, well, no matter what the situation or scenario is. So I would highly, highly suggest if you can, Rewired, you can do a payment plan with it. Look, it will probably be the best money you spend provided you're vulnerable enough and actually do the work required. There's a link in the description. The next one, obviously, as we all know, is discipline. You know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I think it's very, you know, it's a very simple thing. And it's something I listened to a while ago. And Chris Eubank said it on a podcast with Stephen Bartlett. If you haven't watched that, it's a great podcast, great episode. And he basically talks about how when he was training to, be, you know, be a fighter, be a boxer, he went to Cuba and he got in a ring and he thought he was going to fight like a middleweight. And he ended up fighting the heavyweight champ of Cuba. And he knocked him out of the ring, as in the Cuban knocked him out of the ring. And Chris fell on the floor and bashed his knee. And to the point where he thought there's no way he's going to be able to continue to fight. And as he sort of looked up and there's this big Cuban looking down at him thinking he's going to quit. In that moment, he said to himself, if I quit now, what am I saying to myself? Because I'm saying to myself that in the championship rounds, in the front of hundreds of thousands of people in a fight, in the 10th round, I've been knocked down. If I don't have the conviction or the discipline to get up and continue to fight and I can lose to this man, then I'm not gonna be a champion, right? And you can say what you like about Chris, but the mentality there is incredible. And it's the same with like, if he's running on the treadmill, he'll say to himself, if he said to himself, I'm going to run 10 miles, and on, ninth, on the ninth mile, he gets cramp, he has to finish 
the 10 miles because he's told himself he's going to do something. And this is something I've implemented into my life. Again, since Rewired, start of this year. Whatever I say I'm going to do, whether it's a to-do list, whether it's in the gym and I say I'm going to do 10 reps of chest press and I'm on eight and I want to stop, I tell myself in that moment, if I stop and I break this commitment to myself, then what is that going to do for my discipline levels? What does that say about my identity? That will wreak havoc and it will leak into your trading and you'll go to say, I'm not going to take this trade on NFP. I'm going to wait. And then you'll be in the trade because it says to yourself, well, your mind will call you out, right? It's not stupid. We've all experienced it. You'll say, I'm going to do something and it will go, that ain't you, bro. What are you on about? If I say I'm going to do the rowing machine for four minutes, I'm doing the rowing machine for four minutes. No matter what thoughts go through my head during that period, I'm getting it done because that's who I am as a person. And again, it's molding my identity, but it's building discipline. It's building the consistency. So it shows me as an individual in my own head, well, when you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. So you best believe that when I say I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. So for me, discipline is huge and it's all areas of your life. This week, write something down in your journal that you're going to commit to, whether it be for the day or the week, and do it every day and tick it off. And I guarantee you, you feel so much better. And then you begin to start to build it as a habit, non-negotiable in your life. For me, 10K steps. People to this day still message me, how do you do your steps every day? I'm just wired that way now. Two years ago, I started it and I haven't missed it. I think I've missed like three days actually. In, and it's not been like I've not walked or done anything. It's just been, I might've only done 9K because I've been crazy busy or I've not been well. Even if I'm not well, I would try my best to get it done because it's part of me. I won't go to bed if I haven't got it done. I won't sleep correctly. But I've made that thing. I wasn't born with like, oh yeah, our black's doing steps. I created that. And as we know, habits can take 90 days to form. Are you doing the same thing every day for 90 days? Most of you probably aren't. The only thing you're doing consistently is going around around in circles, scrolling social media and looking for some sort of secret potion. That's now become a habit. It's become a neural pathway that you need to unwire. Last but not least is obviously a consistent routine. Again, this is always frowned upon and some people just want to rock up to the charts or rock up to any part of their life and just, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to figure it out. I've got this. However, I just think realistically speaking, having a set routine to get you into peak performance is crucial. If you look at athletes, they don't just turn up on fight day, rock up to the ring and be like, well, go on, let's have it out. Same as footballers, they all have a specific routine. If you're just turning up to the chart and going, yeah, Wagwan well, well, EU is going down, let's go. You're very likely not treating this as that profession. And obviously everybody says, treat trading as a business. You know, what does that even mean? But if you were to start a fresh business, right? And you'd put 20 to 30K in investments into said business, you would treat it correctly. KPIs, you would understand your metrics, the profits, the losses, the outgoings, the growth marketing strategy, the way to build and develop that business you would work on innovation you would be doing so much to ensure that business got off the ground right because it would be your baby it would be your passion are you treating trading that way you're never perfect and if you've got that stupid mindset of arrogance that you think you're the best and you've completed it guys there's people out there that will humble the living shit out of you like that Always remain teachable, always be willing to grow, drop your ego, leave it at the door and just focus on where are you going to be in the next year. Write down seven adjectives of you right now and then compare them in a year and see if any differ, see if any change. Be honest, I can't guide you with this, but write them down and also write down where you currently are in life, whether that's your bank account, your weight, business, relationship, whatever it is. And then in a year, come back to it and see if you've made improvements. This is the only way to truly measure and track yourself. Forget just because you've made loads of money, it doesn't mean anything. Just because you made loads of money doesn't mean your life's going good. Most millionaires and billionaires are depressed, right? It's like saying, oh, just because you live in a house with your partner, you've got a great relationship. Well, what if you don't speak? What if you're not shagging? What if you literally don't like each other, but you live together? That doesn't mean it's good. Same as going to a job. You might hate the job, but what? Because it pays the bills. You're like, yeah, but I, it's all right. There's more to life than that. But you have to track you as an individual. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? How are you going to get there? And are you making those small incremental steps to changing that, to becoming that person. Because if you're not, and you're just sat on YouTube or scrolling TikTok or scrolling Instagram Reels, and you're hoping to just come across something one day that changes everything, I'm sorry, but it ain't gonna happen. Let me know what you think are some key points that have helped you in your trading. And as always, have an incredible day. Smash the rest of your week. Peace and love, gang.